Ladies and gentlemen, I am Sid Alpha. I was going back through the craziness of the past couple of weeks, and I realized that I had never actually followed up on this particular story, even though I had read all of the responses. I never actually put out an update to you all in regards to the situation being resolved, and for that I apologize, as I know that at the time there was a question as to whether the DMCAs were legitimate due to the nature of the content being rebroadcast. And we do have an answer in that regard, but first, a short recap. So what happened was the ESL had issued DMCA strikes against multiple Twitch streamers during the ESL 1 Genting tournament for Dota 2 that was broadcast by the ESL on Facebook, which let me just say that was just a brilliant decision on their part to sign an exclusivity agreement with Facebook. That was just some first class decision making right there. Of course, their decisions surrounding their recent actions shows clearly that whoever's driving over at the ESL might very well be asleep at the wheel. At first, there was a possibility that the Twitch streamers affected might might have been simply rebroadcasting ESL footage, which would actually fall under their copyright, and as such, the DMCA's had a potential for legitimacy. However, it would seem that this was not the case, and the streamers affected were broadcasting from Dota TV, which means that the copyright that would have to be used would have to come from Valve and not the ESL. Shortly after all this happened on the 25th of January, and again you have my apologies for the delay, Valve released a brief but damning statement in regards to the ESL DMCA strikes. In that, they said, We've been seeing a bunch of discussion regarding Dota TV and want to expand on what we've said before. The first issue we've been seeing discussed is regarding DMCA notices. This one is very simple. No one besides Valve is allowed to send DMCA notices for games streamed off of Dota TV that aren't using the broadcaster's unique content, camera movement, voices, etc. The second issue is regarding who is permitted to cast off of Dota TV. We designed the Dota TV guidelines to be flexible in order to allow for up-and-coming casters or community figures like BSJ or Bulldog that occasionally watch tournament games on their channel to be able to stream off of Dota TV. It is not to allow commercial organizations like BTS to compete with the primary stream. It'll be our judgment alone on who violates this guideline and not any other third parties. Which means that the ESL DMCA strikes were not legitimate in this instance and they very clearly overstepped themselves here. And in response to this, the ESL released a statement on Reddit that, if I were one of the Twitch streamers affected, would have me even more angry than before. That statement reads, Over the last few days we were wrong in how we acted in multiple instances, and this post is to apologize to you, fans of esports and community streamers affected. We were wrong in how we kicked off streaming on Facebook, and we were wrong in handling the follow-up with the community, the communications here, and the DMCAs, which we have since retracted. The introduction of Facebook as our new broadcasting platform did not go as it should have. Instead of focusing on ironing out the kinks, engaging in the right kind of dialogue with you and incorporating your legitimate feedback, we were busy following protocol and defending our actions. We should have simply let the community streamers do their thing while focusing on getting our end right. Regardless of having or not having the right to do so, taking down streamers that provide a good experience while we aren't is not the way to go about things. We were in the wrong, we will learn from it and go forward. Now, I'm not going to try to defend it, but since the platform and streaming of the game is a topic which will resurface, I'll try and add some details and context which are important to consider for the broader picture. ESL's goal is to elevate esports. It's been that way for the past 18 years, and many of the same people that started the company in 2000 are still the same ones working behind the scenes at ESL today. We're not in it for short-term profits, but want to help build an industry. Helping to create esports is not only the core of our efforts, it is all we do. Our mission is to give players and teams a platform to create big moments that you enjoy, talk about, and remember. Expanding the amount of streaming platforms which show and promote esports and building an environment where platforms compete to show esports is part of that process. Working with companies that can help us bring esports to the mainstream is part of that process. Yet, if the things we do come at the expense of our relationship with the audience, we need to critically reevaluate our approach. We acknowledge our mistakes and we apologize. What we got wrong last week, we want to get right for the rest of the year. This means learning from what happened, working with Facebook on improving the experience, as well as changing the way we talk with you. 
And this apology, if you could even call it that, shows us very clearly that the ESL really didn't see what they were doing here as being wrong in the strictest sense, even though the title of the statement is, we were wrong. They thought they were in the right, even though that later proved to be untrue. But what they failed to either understand or acknowledge here was the simple fact that they violated federal copyright law and had a direct adverse effect on the streamers that they forced offline with these spurious DMCA strikes. I'm absolutely amazed at this point that we haven't heard about plans for a lawsuit over this. Mike LaPhoenix, better known as MLP Dota, responded to the ESL's faux apology with his own statement four days ago, and his clear-headedness should have the ESL thanking their lucky stars that they aren't dealing with someone with a more litigious and easy-to-anger mindset. Uh, in his statement, MLP Dota said, Thought I should comment here considering I was one of, if not the first to get a DMCA notice on Twitch. For the record, this doesn't at all mean I agree or think they handled the matter the right way at all, and I still consider us extremely lucky slash thankful the community showed myself and John Crossfire so much love after getting shut down initially. The one person out of ESL who I wanted to highlight here is BSL from ESL, who actually reached out to me the day after being DMCA'd, requesting further info as to what happened, and was pretty immediate in helping me out. Sorry, I'm ha I had a little trouble with this sentence initially because it's a little broken. As some of you who returned back to my stream the next may have noticed, we weren't casting again after my 24-hour ban was over and went on to cast every game of the tourney, including the finals. Needless to say, a fair bit of damage had already been done considering we lost at least 75% of the viewership we had initially, not to mention people were saying we had been beaten into submission by the TO, but overall, the reaction and love we received from the community was worth all that in the end. Again, for the record, we went straight back to casting the day after being DMCA'd, and we'll continue casting all games we can get our hands on, including Katowice if there's a demand for it. We are currently doing the Epicenter Open Qualifiers for the casters competition they're having. This is a full-time aspiration for me and has been for the last two weeks. Thankfully, as the false DMCA strikes filed against these streamers have since been retracted by the ESL, the Twitch streamers will not end up with a strike on their accounts, as Twitch also has its own form of three strikes and you're out mentality similar to YouTube's. But as MLP Dota said, a fair bit of damage had already been done. It's being assumed by many, and it is at least somewhat likely, that the ESL did this in order to prevent people from watching the matches being played on a platform other than their own Facebook streams, and had they not gotten caught and called out, it's possible they would have been emboldened to continue such behavior in the future. As it stands, at least for now, they will have to mind their manners and tread a little bit more softly when it comes to their interactions and relations with streamers. But as always, please do let me know what you think down in the comments below. Special thanks to my Patreon supporters, especially the 20 and Up Club. Your continued generosity is an inspiration. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, I am Sinalpha, and I'll see you next time. If you like what I do on this channel and would like to see the channel go full time, consider donating on Patreon or PayPal, as well as hitting that subscribe button and following me on social media. Links to everything are in the description down below.